You cannot buy a Patek. You cannot get an Adimar PK. You cannot get a Rolex. You can't get an FP Jordan. The waiting list for FP Jordan right now is two years and two months. While luxury watches drop significantly in price, Kevin O'Leary tells you why he is still investing in brands like Rolex, Patek Philip, and Audemars Piquet. This is the Cash Cow Guru. We won't waste your time, so let's get started. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe so you won't miss our newest uploads. Rolex prices to drop further a supply surges, says Morgan Stanley. I'm just going to read a paragraph of this. Prices for the most popular pre-owned Rolex, Patek Philippe's, Audemars Piguet's uh, will fall further as the market has been flooded with supply, says Morgan Stanley analysts. After surging in 2021 and during the first quarter of 2022, an index of the most popular models from Daytona chronograph maker Rolex tracked by watch charts has fallen 21% since the market peak in April. Prices of the most popular Nautilus maker, Patek, has also fallen by about 19%. So high-end watches are falling. Is this an indicator of anything to do with the economy, or is this just sector-specific to watches? Well, I'm familiar with that index. I'm also familiar with that article. But what it doesn't point out is the 36 months prior, you're up about 400%. So right. the actual index is down about 28%. So if you were investing in watches over the last 36 months, you've beaten every index, including the S&P. And, and so it's still my best performing asset class. When people talk about Rolex being the biggest brand, the largest manufacturer, the most units, walk into any boutique anywhere in America, anywhere in Asia, anywhere in the Middle East, and try and buy a Rolex. It's true the secondary market has softened 28%, but there is absolutely no supply of new watches. And one of the problems, and this is across the entire Swiss, Italian, German, and Japanese watchmaking industry, is that we can't get young people to pursue the craft of watchmaking anymore. A new generation of watchmakers, very hard to find because most young people that you know have to start this between 14 and 16 years old and dedicate your life to it, don't understand the need for a mechanical watch anymore. And so they look at their, their cell phone or their, mm -hmm. or their Apple watch and say, this is more accurate than any Rolex is ever going to be. What do I need a Rolex for? So that has seeped into the market and is actually reducing the supply of watches. And again, prices are creeping up. One of the other indexes to talk about, and I'm glad you brought this topic up, is the Phillips auctions that occur just for watches. The last one was in mid-December. I was very fortunate. I put up one of my Rolex Daytonas that had been used on Shark Tank for charity. And it went for a record price. And so there's nothing soft about the secondary market for fine timepieces. And that was a very, very strong auction. And I also bought some pieces there. At the top prices, I thought I could get them cheaper. It didn't happen. So be very careful about the assumption of just using watches as an overall index for the market. The demand is insatiable. They're still hard to get. And the supply is going to be continuing to be shrinking. So I, I think we'll, I love when we talk about this every few months because I'm keeping an eye on it. You cannot buy a Patek. You cannot get an Adimar PK. You cannot get a Rolex. You can't get an FP Jordan. The waiting list for FP Jordan right now is two years and two months for the lowest end models. I was just at the boutique here in Miami. I brought a fan in who begged me for a CB, a Chronometre Bleu, the blue Putin watch. I took him to the boutique. He had to write an essay to apply for the right to buy one and receive it over two years from now. So I don't know what those guys are talking about. High-end watches All are right. still better than gold. Omega is now six months behind in releasing their new dials. They can't get the production out. They don't have enough watchmakers. I mean, Omega, the brand has gone through the roof in recent times with drops like the Snoopy. And what happened with the Swatch Group dropping um, all kinds of new Omega designs that were very, very popular for both men and women. And that's a, that's a remarkable story. You know, the, J the James Bond watch came out of Omega. You can't get one. Go into the boutique. And so vintage watches are stabilized. They went down around 28%. They have stabilized for the last four months, months now. But there's no forecast for growth in unit output from any watchmaker this year. They simply can't get the labor. The problem is the, the consumer is still flush with capital. Wealthy uh, U.S. Uh, consumers, Asian consumers, Middle East consumers have an abundance of free capital. There is inflation, which makes them want to buy hard assets across the board, whether it be high-end pens, watches, cars, art. Um, the, the auctions are, are still very, you know, this is a very unusual recession, if indeed we are in a recession, mm. because you've got so much capital still on the sidelines, over $4 trillion cash. 
So worldwide. And so, you, you know, this is this is not your grandfather's recession. Now I'm looking for companies that A, are cash flow positive, B, do distributions of profits. So in other words, they take the cash and they distribute it through dividends. Some of them will do share buybacks, but not now that's being taxed. I think the, the dividend is going to be more popular. And so you have to be doing that without taking on debt. So if you have a clean balance sheet, not too much debt, and you're distributing profits, well, that's a good place to invest because you can probably make 5%, maybe 6 on capital appreciation in the next year, and maybe one5 to 2% in dividend yield. So I look at healthcare sector, very interesting. I like commodities. I like gold right now. I've pulled my horns in a little bit on tech because those are still trading at over 20 PEs, which is expensive. And those stocks have already had massive corrections. Media stocks are really interesting. They're fribulating right now because of all the streaming losses, but you've seen some recovery in those names over the last 90 days as people start to say, well, who's going to survive the streaming wars and who isn't? Because media itself is an interesting business model if you think that you can get direct to consumer. Disney is under scrutiny now. I own that name. Nelson Phelps has said he wants to be an activist. That's probably good for the stock. And so you've got to find these situations. So underweighting tech, um, not overweighting energy. I think energy's had a fantastic run. But I think you want to take a little bit off the table there. It's been a very, very good place to be last year. I don't think you'll get the same kind of returns this year. Finding those large cap names in the S&P that have strong balance sheets across multi-sectors that pay distributions, that's the play for 2023. Everything that I have on the balance sheet drips cash like a chicken on a spit dripping fat. It's got to drip cash. And that's what I do. I'm the cash guy. And I believe in cash. You can trust cash. You can't lie about cash. And I like cash. So I try and keep myself very close to cash. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy. Uh, I have been going back into the crypto markets lately. Uh, anytime uh, Bitcoin drops below 17,000, I add to our positions there. Uh, crypto is getting very interesting because we're finally starting to see the bear of regulation coming into play. And I think long term, that's a good thing. Uh, these hearings in the Senate have really poked the bear, as I like to say. And I, I participated in the last hearings. And when I had a chance to talk to the, the people on the Hill or the lawmakers, I sensed they, um, that they're frustrated now. They're tired of re, you know, putting these, these hearings on every six months, every time one of these crypto company blows, blows up and goes to zero. They're so unregulated. These unregulated exchanges are just, they're, they're all, they're all going to, go to zero. And what's going to come out of it eventually is going to be a regulated crypto market, which I think will be very interesting because there's real merit. I mean, crypto itself is, is not the bad guy. Crypto is just software code. It's not the software code. It's all of these rogue players and these unregulated exchanges and the issuance of all these meritless tokens, the token on the exchange, all of this crap if i excuse my french yeah it's all going to go away it's all going to go away all the unregulated exchanges of having are having massive outflows right now the smart money has got the joke they saw what happened in ftx they're not sitting around for an explanation and if you're not willing to be audited and i'm speaking about any exchange if you don't have an auditor you don't want to be transparent you want you don't want to disclose ownership why should institutional capital stay there of course it's not going to and frankly you know, you can, it's very hard to find an auditor that wants to touch this stuff right now because of an unregulated cowboy environment. It's all going to end. And yes, there'll be many more zeros. I play by the government rules and I buy assets that are pr protect me against inflation, like watches, like gold, like equities that are profitable companies. I mean, that's what I do. And I think th that those rules have been established for hundreds of years and they work. So we're in a, in a period of inflation. You've got to actually adjust what you're doing with your capital to protect yourself and protect your buying power. I buy real estate as well. There's all kinds of things you can do, and you can do them in a regulated environment. Uh, the narrative towards a soft landing uh, is now at 50% of the narrative you hear in, in, in analysts discussing the future. And they're trying to you know determine the next 24 months. I've never seen so much narrative towards a soft landing, which people claimed only four months ago was impossible. You never get it. Well, it seems you might be getting that. You just don't know. I think to stay the course is to assume that returns on markets will be muted more in that six to eight period, the six to eight percent that I mentioned, and that you want to be very careful. And this is a narrative that a lot of people talked about. Quality matters now. Speculative, unprofitable companies have been absolutely crushed 
Those stocks are down 70, 80, 90%. I don't anticipate them coming back. People are focusing on what's real and what is actually going to make money. And every once in a while, you get a, a you know a crazy story, uh, chat GBT, you know, that discussion about an uh, evaluation of $29 billion. Who knows if Microsoft does that deal under what terms? It smells like a royalty deal to me that they're doing. I think they ripped me off from Shark Tank on that thing because they're taking <laughs> a, they're taking out all the profits and getting half the business. I like that structure. I should charge them a royalty. But at the end of the day, um, the markets are going to be far more muted and you have to focus on balance sheet and quality, just like it was in the old days. And so we're back. It's a full circle. All the speculative froth is gone and profit matters again. We hope you enjoyed this video. This was the Cash Cow Guru. Stay blessed all.